Welcome back to Vix Projects everyone and today we're going to get all the electric bits inside our Moto Compo. So if you remember from our last video we connected all the electronics up and got this wheel spinning so we know everything works. Now our bike's on the bench all stripped down and we can start figuring out where on earth we can place these components. So we can see our new big wheel is actually quite big uh, so we're going to have a few packaging challenges on the way I'm sure. So the first thing we're going to try and place is the motor controller and having a look at it this feels like a really good place to put it. So it's nice and packaged out of the way uh, we've got some airflow for the cooling of this guy. However, there is two configurations of this bike that we've got to look at. So in this configuration it's alright, but if we step to the other, clearly this space here is required for these handlebars to go through. So our next logical place is a bit further forward, around there. Being that bit further forward, it now fits perfectly. All we've got to do now is make some brackets and weld them in. So that's two out of our three big components fitted, the wheel and the motor controller. The next one is our batteries. Now ideally, I'd just like to be able to pull the batteries in and out to charge them. So I've made this handy little carrier. We'll make it out of metal later. So if we imagine that guy lives there. Let's double check. Everything still fits. Perfect. So we now know roughly where all our bits are going to go. So let's start making some brackets and then we can fine tune from there. There we go, four nice simple brackets just made out of bar steel. We've got one going up and we'll see why a little bit later on. But let's cut these down and get them welded in. Now we've got this guy fitted in, I did promise I'd tell you why we've got one that comes up when all the other ones go down. So if we take a look at the original bike, we have a fuel cutoff switch. So this is a really handy feature that we can repurpose into the high voltage switch on and switch off. So we've got ourselves a big switch and now let's take a look at how we modify it to make it fit in this location. So our original switch has a little hole that it fits through and crucially our new isolator switch is one that's modifiable so this guy actually comes out so that can go in there this guy can fit on there and all we need now is a bracket to hold it So now we've got somewhere to mount the inverter, the batteries, something to turn them on and off again, and also a quick throttle switch. All we need is to mount our motor and we'll be able to take this thing out for a quick test drive. So if you remember back when we made our lovely swing arm out of aluminium, we actually brazed this up in a steel jig. And as you might be able to see, this alley has expanded more than the steel jig and bowed. So now I can't get the bearings in here and this thing is basically scrap. Wow, that made more noise than I thought it would do. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is rather than try and make something out of alley again and have to get someone else to weld it up, I'm gonna make it out of steel. Now one thing I did notice when putting that uh, aluminium extrusion up or the aluminium um, swing arm up was that it was actually a little bit too long. So I made the next one a bit shorter. This however was a bit short. This guy <laughs> is our Goldilocks. So third time lucky. Let's get this installed because I'm dying to take this for a test drive. So we're getting really close now. It's very exciting. So we just need to stop this guy floating around in midair by installing our shock. So the shock 
lives on its original mount about there, but clearly it won't work because that clashes. So I need help from the bracket fairy to help me mount this guy. Perfect. So you might be asking yourself, Vic, why are you not now sitting on this bike and giving it its first test ride? We've got our shock on, we've got a second shock on to balance it out because when I put the first one on, it was just starting to twist uh, and torsion the swing arm. I have actually tried to ride this bike already, but if you look very closely here, it didn't actually go too well. I've waited so long to try this. Here we go. Let's see how she goes. Whoa, fuck. GoPro stop recording. So it turns out the motor is actually too powerful and has torn itself out of this mount. Oh, time to get the world back out again. Okay, second time round, and now with 12 mil of steel as our hangers, hopefully this thing will stay together this time. Right, here we go. Oh. Right, this time with the motor spinning in the right direction, let's try for a third time. <laughs> Jeez, this is so powerful. <laughs> I can't even get it off the line without the front wheel lifting. <laughs> to do something with his throttle. Well that was a lot more successful. I didn't die this time. Okay, it's all right trying it on the decking here, but we need to get it out on the road. Here we are, out of the shed, finally. We're at an industrial estate, so there's no one around, so it's nice and safe. Let's see what she can do. too powerful. I think I might knock down some of the current settings on this. Okay, it's a little bit more manageable now I've turned it down a touch, but let's see how we do from a standing start. No, still way too dangerous for a standing start. It is absolutely crazy. I am terrified of this thing. This is probably the most dangerous thing I think I've ever ridden. It is just insane. Even though I've turned all the power down to pretty much half what this thing can put out, it still just wants to lift that front wheel. I think what's happening, if you look at where I'm sitting, I'm pretty much just sitting on top of the rear wheel. So there's nothing actually to counterbalance the weight. So when that electric motor wants to deploy all that torque, all it does is lift the bike. Which means <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to find a way, i.e. make a new swing arm, to move this rear wheel a bit further back. And that might need modifying bodywork or the, the plates or something like that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of X Projects and we'll see you next time. Thank you.